Welcome everybody to the Baldridge Foundation quarterly webinar for the third quarter 2018. Uh, a little bit later here in the broadcast, we're going to hear from Bob Fangmeyer, the director of the Baldrige Performance Excellence Program, as well as Brian Lassiter, the chair of the Alliance for Performance Excellence. As a reminder to everybody, um, all participants are on mute. And if you would like to ask a question, we ask that you open your chat box in the lower right hand corner of your control screen and type the question in. And we will take those questions and answer them at the end of the webinar. Today's agenda, we are going to talk a little bit about what's going on here at the foundation with advocacy and fundraising and some of our channel partnerships. And then we're going to hear again from Bob Fangmeyer and Brian Lassiter and take questions with some closing remarks. I always like throwing this slide up at the beginning of all of our presentations, all of our board meetings and all of our staff meetings to remind us of our strategy and our strategy map. Again, for those dialing in for the first time, the Baldridge Foundation's mission is twofold. One is advocacy on behalf of the program and coordinating with members of Congress across the federal government, as well as state programs building grassroots support there as well. And then also fundraising to ensure the financial viability and sustainability of the Baldridge Performance Excellence Program. From the advocacy front, we've got a lot to uh, uh, discuss here today, and it's all good and it's all exciting. Uh, the first thing is, uh, as a reminder to everybody, we're always in three budget cycles at the same time continuously throughout the year. Uh, right now, we're executing the FY18 budget, which the Baller's Performance Excellence Program received $2.2 million from Congress. The green boxes are where we are at with FY19 budget and the process there. And so both the House and the Senate uh, have full appropriations committees have voted for and approved the appropriations bills for FY19. Now both of those bills will come together in conference committee and the final bill will be sent to the president ideally before 1 October and signed into law, but for about the last 19 years, uh, that has we have seen a continuing resolution and uh, not a budget passed until about the December, January, February timeframe. Uh, this year was even later than that. So that's where we're at with FY19, which begins 1 October. Uh, there's currently $2.2 million in the Senate version of that bill again this year. And the exciting uh, news is that I had a meeting uh, with Senator Moran, Jerry Moran from Kansas yesterday, and he is very supportive of the Baldrige program and all of the great work that we do across the country to include in Kansas with the Missouri program as their state regional program. In FY20, uh, the federal government is currently submitting and rolling up data from within all the federal agencies to submit the president's budget, which will be due next February by law, the first Monday in February each year. And uh, we are hoping at this point that uh, $2.2 million or more is going to be requested by the president out of commerce and, and out of NIST. And so we'll be tracking that closely as that budget develops and as it's delivered and then start working with members of Congress to ensure they support it again next year. So that's currently where we're at with the budget process. Uh, as a reminder, these are the key members of the Senate Commerce Justice Science Subcommittee, and we can't thank enough Senator Shelby, who used to be the chair of this subcommittee, who is now the chair of the full Appropriations Committee, and the new chair, Jerry Moran from the great state of Kansas, as well as the ranking member who's been equally as supportive, Gene Shaheen from New Hampshire. And thanks to our New Hampshire friends out there in the program who have connected with her to ensure that she supports Ballridge in the future. As part of our advocacy efforts, uh, you can see this is a map of all state programs. And what we do is we try to lean on state programs to make these strong connections to these members of Congress so that to ensure the support uh, for Baldridge and the foundation's efforts here. And so I'll frequently contact the uh, president, CEOs, executive directors of these programs for additional information to find out things that are happening in these states. And so if you have something out there happening in a state, especially um, one of the key states here, which one of these senators represent, uh, letting us know as soon as you can here at the foundation uh, allows us to transmit that information into their office so that they're aware of all the great progress and all the great work that you're doing. These are the contacts for individuals who run the programs in each of these states. 
just to let you know that we track that as well. And this is an example here of what we're doing with TPE, the Partnership for Excellence. And it just so happens that TPE has two senators, both from West Virginia, Shelley Moore Capito and Joe Manchin. Uh, Shelley is a Republican and Joe Manchin is a Democrat. And so we have personal meetings with each of these uh members of Congress throughout the year. And we also work with state employers and organizations. You can see the Charleston Area Medical Center um, picture there in the center of the screen. And so Charleston Area Medical Center is very important to the local community. They're also the people who are driving the program uh, for the communities of excellence as a pilot in Charleston. And so we frequently send things like updates on award recipients and other information. You can see in the upper right hand corner, every time a state program uh, announces their award winners in their state, what we do is we send members of Congress from that state a letter informing them that those organizations have received the Baldridge Award of some kind, both at national and both at the state level as well. And then we also send them a copy of the Journal of Performance Excellence to let them know what's happening around the Baldridge community nationally. Um, we send them invitations to state conferences and to Quest. And as an example, um, Senator uh, more capital from West Virginia. When Charleston Area Medical Center won their national award, she attended uh, the ceremony and she is the first U.S. Senator to attend a ceremony uh, since the program's inception. We also like to <clears throat> highlight and target all the social media out there. And so we're very aggressive about working their social media, monitoring their social media and asking everybody to retweet information to that uh, is relevant to Baldridge within their states. A new thing that we're going to do this uh, September, so you all know, is we're going to have a congressional briefing and a reception on Capitol Hill. And so what we're going to do is sponsor a um, an event for all of the members and their staffs, and we'll mostly get staffers there, but they're key people to uh, keep informed of what's happening with Baldridge. We're going to bring in some Baldridge Award recipient CEOs to talk to them about the transformational power of Baldridge and what it has done for their organizations. And we'll hit the number of sectors, education, healthcare, as well as small business, the business sector, manufacturing, and government. And so uh, after that's over with, we'll have a reception for them, again, strengthening our relationships with uh, members of Congress and their staffs. Another example in the uh, great state of Alabama, which is critically important to us with Senator Shelby being from Alabama, uh, we've worked with the executive director down there, Linda Vincent, and the staff at the University of Alabama Birmingham uh, Medical Center and the, and the university. And uh, Dr. Mickey Trim has been instrumental in helping us connect to that entire community down there. Um, we help them with state speakers and Paul Grizel and Suki Wright can't thank them enough. The consultant community uh, stepping up to help us build and strengthen a program down in the state of Alabama. Uh, I was lucky enough to be able to attend as a keynote for their conference and their first award dinner. And uh, I was with their board chair, uh, Charlie Blass, who's the gentleman on the far right there and one of their award recipient organizations, as you can see in the center. And so I just can't, you know, give enough credit to Linda and the Mickey Trim and, and to Charlie Blass and his entire board out there. Uh, in one year, they uh, announced that they were going to take applications in, they trained examiners, they examined these organizations, they had award recipients uh, at various levels and they had a great conference and it was just, uh, you couldn't ask for a better first year from a state program. So Linda and Mickey, again, kudos to you and everybody down there in the great state of Alabama. Uh, we try to do the same thing with the House of Representatives and the Commerce Justice Science Subcommittee. Uh, it's been a little bit more difficult down there. Uh, some of the Republicans in power are uh, Tea Party Republicans. And, and so the trains of dollars that we find ourselves in debt as a nation is uh, the highest thing on their agenda. And so getting more money for a program that had been previously cut has been difficult. So, uh, But we're still continuing to work with each of them. And, uh, and hopefully, if uh, the leadership change or, or things change in the House, uh, we'll be equally as uh, aggressive in working with the new members. Can't thank Sam Graves enough uh, from the state of Missouri. Uh, once again, this year, as in previous years, uh, he's built support in the House for us, for Baldridge. 
Um, he comes from a Baldrige uh, state that is with Midway USA. Uh, you've got the uh, two former healthcare organization recipients out there, SSM Health, Heartland Health. And so Sam has been just an outstanding champion and supporter of the Baldrige program, uh, thanks to Lowell Cruz and a lot of a number of people out there who uh, who work with him on a regular basis in the great state of Missouri. So once again, Sam submitted testimony this year. Uh, we have copies of that testimony. And if you would like to read it, it's also posted to our website. We're still working to re-engage the president. Uh, we're getting closer, I think, every day to uh, getting some type of event at the White House to recognize uh, the award recipients. Uh, we're truly focused on the ones that are coming up, but also playing catch up with previous award recipients. And uh, hopefully we're going to hear something before too long uh, from the White House. We know that we have Commerce's support now in doing that as well as NIST. And so we're uh, excited about the opportunity again to re-engage the president. We've worked across the, the cabinet to build relationships, uh, strong relationships, especially in healthcare, uh, education, and small business, but others as well. Uh, one of the ones we're truly excited about is the one with agriculture because they're supporting communities of excellence and uh, with their new innovation center in uh, the USDA, Claudette Fernandez is running that for Ann Hazlett. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to acquire a grant at some point to help strengthen the communities of excellence pilots around the country. And so that's just a clear example of how the other federal agencies could be supportive of Baldridge and, uh, and also help us to build awareness throughout the country. Uh, grassroots support. Uh, just to let you all know, if you want to find it on our website, uh, it's the Get Involved section, and then you can find the, the Baldridge Impact, how to contact Congress, um, an advocacy update, as well as some of the other things that we're doing to build support for the program. I encourage you to look around and take advantage of those tools and those opportunities to help us as well. This is a chart that we use, and uh, I previously shared this with Brian Lassiter, and, and hopefully um, we'll be able to get everybody to update it. If there are any changes to this, please let us know. But what we do is we've taken this alliance chart and we track each of your award programs, making the assumption that at the end of the cycle, the following month, about that time frame, you'll be announcing your winners for your uh, various state programs. And so we watch for those. And then as you announce your winners, and we see that you know, on the internet or on your website, uh, we submit letters. The foundation blue box at the end is where we submit letters congratulating them, as well as uh, sending members of Congress letters and letting them know they have award recipients in their district. So if you are a state award recipient, we would send a letter to you congratulating you. We would send a letter to both U.S. senators and to your member of Congress uh, in the House of Representatives. And then I also roll those up and we'll send them to the state program directors as well so that you know that we've done it. And please feel free if you're out there in a state program to use those letters, uh, to use the language in those letters uh, as you see fit to uh, add on and do your own letters as well. Be very helpful. Uh, just to let you know, we've done and laid some groundwork here. Uh, there's been discussion about ball, uh, communities of excellence becoming a seventh sector in Baldridge. And uh, should that initiative begin to move forward, then what we will do is work with these subcommittees here, which we've identified as the appropriate subcommittee who would uh, authorize um, that change. And so um, we stand ready to do that and, and look forward to supporting communities of excellence in any way that we can. Fundraising, going to talk a little bit about some of the exciting things we're doing there. Our relationship with SOAR Vision Group uh, down in Georgia continues to grow, and we have an exciting event coming up in the fall uh, where we're inviting 20 of the most powerful CEOs in the country from the healthcare sector, along with a uh, co sponsor between us, SOAR, and the Wall Street Journal Custom Studios. And so we are going to have a CEO Innovation Council roundtable event. And during that event, we're going to have a great discussion about Baldridge, um, see if we can't get more organizations in healthcare using Baldridge, uh, as well as some of the exciting tools and products and services that SOAR Vision Group provides. Also want to make everybody aware that now co-sponsored with uh, SOAR Vision Group, we have a Radio X weekly podcast. Uh, which is at 1 p.m. each Friday. And if you see that link at the bottom there, if you click on that link, uh, either from your smartphone or your computer, you can dial into it, as well as catch up on um, past 
podcasts because they are loaded to the website. So along the foundation, along with Sword Vision Group, we now have our own Radio X weekly podcast uh, throughout the uh, internet. In addition to that, I would invite each of you to look at the Leader Dialogue website that we have with the SOAR Vision Group, and there is a blog, Leader to Leader blog on there, and so um, we would like you to post blogs, um, comment, and use uh, all that material as you see fit in your organization. Uh, we uh, encourage consultants to do that as well and to uh, write blog articles. I know a lot of you are... Uh, aggressive about that on LinkedIn, and then also sending out to your constituents uh, blog articles that you frequently write. And so this is another way for you to get the word out and uh, hopefully build and strengthen awareness for Baldrige. Uh, many of you asked about the Journal of Performance Excellence and getting a copy of it. As a reminder, you can download it for free with that website link that you see on the right. Or the other thing that you can do is uh, if you want printed copies, uh, you can give us a call or send uh, Terry Owens an email, and we'll be more than happy to get them uh, out to you. Uh, we've shipped a number of them uh, by the case, 36 books at a time, but it's a great way, it's a great tool for promoting Baldridge from a leader perspective, because as you know, if you've seen the journal, uh, most of the articles in there have been written by leaders, not only from the board, but throughout the Baldridge community. The combined federal campaign is coming up again for 2018, and just to let you all know, we've, we're in the process of updating all the information, the instructional webinar, the slides that you can use to make a presentation at a federal facility. Um, any federal facility, is, every federal facility is going to have an event of some kind here in the fall, usually late September, early October, and this year, if you make a presentation, uh, we will know from the presentation date because one of the things that we ask you to do is give us a one page uh, sort of like um, after action review of your event with how many where you gave it, the time you gave it and how many people that you think you spoke to um, just estimating it. And then what we'll do this year for state programs is if you go out and you give this we um, presentation and people sign up at that location for combined federal campaign the state program will receive 100% of those donations. And so we're going to be doing our own here in certain uh, locations around the country, mostly Washington, D.C. and the National Capital Region. But for all those others out there that um, want to go out there and try and raise money for their program, again, 100% of the money that's donated by the people that you're able to um, reach out to uh, will come back to your state program. Talk a little bit about fundraising and the Secretary of Commerce, uh, Wilbur Ross. We have a, a letter into him, and hopefully, we're going to be having another meeting with him shortly to talk about all of the fundraising that we would like him to do along with us. Uh, the picture that you see in the lower left hand corner is uh, President Reagan, and to his left or to the right of the picture is Secretary Verity. And Secretary Verity was instrumental in establishing the foundation the uh, endowment and helping to build the endowment over the first several years of the program. And so we're hoping that Secretary Ross will be, uh, help us be able to do the same thing. Uh, by law, he is one of the few people in the federal government who's authorized to fundraise for the private sector. Um, real quick, beyond feedback, um, if you're out there working with a Baldridge-based organization or if you're in a Baldridge-based organization and you're really trying to move the, lead, move the needle with stakeholder engagement, or customer engagement. Um, they have a great tool, their ESAT survey. And uh, Larry Potterfield, you probably heard him speak about this uh, during his acceptance speech at the last Quest conference. Um, Beyond Feedback is truly um, a great company with a great product and a, and a great service. And they have 100% customer retention of all their customers. And the, not too many organizations can actually say that. So again, if you're looking for a instrument to help you move the needle when it comes to employee satisfaction engagement, uh, please consider using Beyond Feedback. The plan giving program continues to attract a number of people out there. We've had a lot of inquiries about it. If you want to learn more about the plan giving program or have somebody who would like to learn more about it, we have a number of products and tools that we can send them and then uh, meet with them to figure out what it is they would like to do in terms of a uh, gift. A reminder to everybody about Amazon Smile. Um, if you can help us push this, um, that would be great out there. If you're out there shopping on Amazon, one of the things you can do is use Amazon Smile to uh, anything that you buy, 
on Amazon. You go have to go through Amazon Smile to actually get to Amazon. But once you do that, anything that you buy, proceeds go to the foundation. It does not change the um, what you're buying in terms of changing the amount. It's just something that Amazon does as uh, part of their corporate uh, responsibility to give 0.5% of anything that you buy on Amazon to the Baldridge Foundation. Now, when you first log on, you have to log on and choose your charity. And when you choose it, you're going to choose the foundation for the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. And that's how we're listed in there. But once you get in there, if you drag the um, icon for Amazon Smile onto your desktop, or if you drag it into your taskbar, uh, then all you have to do is simply click on it. And from then on in, that's how you'll get to Amazon is through Amazon Smile. Foundation awards and all the information for submitting somebody for an award, the David Spong Lifetime Achievement Award, the Harry Hertz Leadership Award, and then our awards for leadership excellence by sector, as well as the Dr. Kurt Ryman Baldridge Scholarship uh, are all available in one downloadable handbook to include the forms that you have to fill out to submit. And again, we were we will take these uh, all the way through the fall here, make a decision in November and announce and award them at Quest next year in 2019. A Little bit in operations. Um, we're still building sponsors each and every day for future Quest events. And we're currently working on uh, the 2019 ceremony. I wanna thank Mid-America Transplant uh, for their donation last year and being the uh, Baldridge Awards Ceremony and Celebratory Dinner sponsor uh, and previous to them, the Ford Motor Company. As a reminder to everybody too, a new thing that we have out there was with Walden University is a uh, $3,000 tuition grant. And, and another way to go out there and help the states in our alliance-based programs, if you have any employees out there who are an employee of the, uh, the national uh, award recipient or a state award recipient, then those employees are eligible for a $3,000 Walden tuition grant. And so you can see a variety of the programs that they have down there, uh, 435 specializations, and they also all the way up through PhDs. And so that's a, another great benefit for members of the, uh, of the Baldrige community. And for more information, you can contact us on that, or you can click on uh, the Walden um, icon on our website. In the marketing arena, uh, hopefully you're all out there following the Baldrige Foundation and uh, in all of our social media messaging, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Google+. And just to let you know, because we track everything here, uh, we did receive a grant from Google, and that Google grant has allowed us to put a number of ads across the internet, which have given us unprecedented results in this chart here, uh, because we do track everything with our own Baldrige application. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you was the number of uh, click-through rates that we have with Google AdWords and percent. And the fact that the average of all industries, as you can see on the bottom, there's 1.92%. The leading industry, which is real estate is 7.58%. And recently we've been as high as 9.4%, but we're hovering as a best in class right now um, organization for getting out information on the web. So again, uh, the marketing team there led by Doc Wada, thanks for all your work there. And uh, we're also going to start opening this up for uh, to help with advertising for the program as well. And Bob Fangmeyer and I have just started into those uh, discussions. So with that, I'm going to turn over uh, to Bob and uh, the Baldrige program in Washington. Bob? Thanks, Al. Uh, I had to unmute my my microphone sorry about that um first of all i want to thank you al for everything you do and everything the foundation does to help support the program support our mission our purpose and our various strategic initiatives around cybersecurity and communities of excellence we really do appreciate it it makes all the difference okay so i've got a little bit of time here and just a few slides that i'm going to go through and i'm going to cover a few topics talk a little bit about the 2018 bulge award process the process we're going through to revise the Baldrige framework, and then share with you some recent survey data uh, that I think you'll find um, interesting and impressive. So about the ongoing award process for 2018. Some of you, Al, would you go to the next slide? Some of you probably heard that we had 27 award applicants. Now that's not a bad number, it's better than last year, but it's when you look at the actual segmented data 
that you see and really glean some real information and knowledge, right? So what you see when you look at the breakout of the various award categories is we are still very low in the business applicants. That's not good, but it's also not new. And so unfortunately, um, we haven't been able to move the needle very far as yet and increasing the number of the business applicants at all levels in order to fill the pipeline for the Baldrige Award is one of the strategic objectives that's been identified for the Baldrige Enterprise as a whole. But you should know that several of the Baldrige Program strategic initiatives, including cybersecurity excellence, communities of excellence, our increased collaboration with NIST's Manufacturing Extension Partnership, the various award process changes that we're piloting, and the effort to try and simplify the Baldrige framework all have the intent and the potential to help us re-engage with the business community. So that said, we should never forget that the applicants are still just a small fraction of the users of the framework. But as far as I'm concerned, it's critically important that we are able to identify role model businesses that are willing to share their best practices with others. And so we will not give up on that effort. For 2018, we will utilize 352 examiners. Now, not all of those folks will be performing evaluations of the applicants. There are some other critical supporting roles that many of our most experienced examiners will participate in uh, that, that help support the program and what we're trying to accomplish. We selected 443 examiners, but we know that there's a certain amount of attrition that happens between selection and examiner training. So uh, we plan for that. And although we selected 443, the 352 is about what we were expecting and about what we needed. All right, so talking about changes to the award process, many of you have probably heard about our ongoing award process pilot. We were testing some proposed changes to the process. The goals for the pilot, the goals for any changes to the award process are listed on the slide. First and foremost, retain the rigor and integrity of the process. We will not sacrifice the rigor and the integrity of the Baldridge Award process. We're looking to try and figure out how to simplify and streamline the process to reduce the cycle time and to enhance the value that we add for all who participate, from the examiners and the judges, and of course, for the applicant organizations themselves. Now the proposed changes, if they do not accomplish those goals, we will not implement them. We will go back to the drawing board, we will tweak things, we will make changes until we get it right. We do have a team of very experienced examiners who are working with us to test the proposed changes. They have already done what I'll call desk audits of some of the key steps in the revised process, and they provided us some feedback. We've already made some tweaks to the proposed approach based on their feedback, and the team is now gearing up for the official pilot evaluation. So we're gonna to continue to collect feedback from them and from uh, the applicant organization, the pilot applicant organization at every major milestone to ensure that the process is effective, that it's efficient, user-friendly, and that it is accomplishing those goals that I listed above. So far, the feedback we've received is, is pretty positive. Um, they have noted that the revised approaches are indeed easier and they're less time consuming, but it is still too early to claim victory. We need to see how the process works with the real application. And of course, we have to see what the quality of the final product is that comes out the back end. And that'll be determined based on customer feedback as well as examiner feedback, judge feedback, and, and what the program observes as well, of course. Certainly there's gonna be a lot more to come on this as the pilot continues over the summer. Al, would you go to the next slide? All right, Baldrige Framework. Um, as most of you probably know, we are approaching the end of the planned uh, cycle of the current version and we are anticipating the release of a new version in 2019. We don't know for sure because we don't know what the changes might be yet. We're still in that process. However, that is the anticipated, um, that's the expectation. Now it's sort of, I'll say always been our intent that the Baldrige framework 
serve as a non-prescriptive leadership and management guide that facilitates a systems approach to achieving organization-wide excellence. And it's also important that the criteria for performance excellence reflect the leading edge of validated leadership and management practices. Those two adjectives are really important, leading edge and validated. We're not talking about bleeding edge and theoretical. The framework itself is the first prong of our three-pronged mission, and it is imperative that it and the criteria be recognized and accepted as what I call the national standard of performance excellence. And of course, it needs to be applicable to any organization of any size, any sector, and in any situation. And that's a lot that we have to consider when we start talking about making changes to the framework. And yet there's no point in having a perfect standard if it's not widely used. So in addition to all those things I mentioned above, over the past several cycles, we've also been committed to looking for ways to try and make sure that the framework and the criteria are as simple and user-friendly as possible. And while we have made some progress in that area, I believe there's still opportunity. And so that is, again, one of the key focus areas for this revision process this year. So we will continue to strive to determine what updates are appropriate and necessary. And we base that on sort of the ongoing evolution of various proven drivers of long-term success and sustainability. But as I said, we'll be searching for ways to streamline and simplify as well. We will gather inputs and have been gathering inputs from a wide variety of sources, including an ongoing review of the literature out there from leading thinkers, from suggestions and recommendations from all of our key stakeholder groups, both inside the Baldur's community and outside, as well as inputs and suggestions from individuals and organizations who are uh, familiar with and uh, subject matter experts in uh, quality and performance excellence. One of the changes to the process we're using this year is the inclusion of a series of webinars where we are having a cross-section of key stakeholders, including award recipients, consultants, examiners, judges, state program representatives, and others, who will review the proposed changes, contribute their own thoughts, and then come to sort of a consensus recommendation for the program to consider. Those have been going quite well, um, and we have three more of those webinars scheduled for next week. In addition, one other thing we're considering at this point in time is the appropriateness of changing the life cycle of the next version to be perhaps three years instead of two. Or perhaps it'll be undefined to provide us maximum flexibility. But feedback on a longer cycle time is definitely mixed. Uh, and this is something that we're going to have to put very careful thought into and get input from multiple stakeholder groups before we would make that sort of change. Okay, Al, would you go to the next slide, please? So I thought you might be interested in some late breaking data from a survey that we recently sent out to all of the Baldwin Award recipients. As most of you probably know, there have been 118 Baldrige Awards given to 110 different organizations from all different sectors. We sent the survey to all 110 organizations. Now, many of them have not been engaged for many years. Um, some of them have been bought up by other organizations, changed hands a number of times. So we weren't expecting 100% response rate, but we did want to reach out to everybody. Response rate we had was over 33%. Um, so not bad at all, quite good. And um, we really wanted to understand from their perspective, what was the impact of their use of Baldrige Framework and Baldrige-based products and services? So we were hoping, of course, for positive results. But I got to tell you, actually, um, the responses were even better than we could have hoped for. And what you see here is the percent of the respondents that agreed that use of Baldrige-based tools and products and services improved the following aspects of their organization. 100% 
said that Baldridge improved their strategic planning. 100% said improved their governance, their ethics, their educational outcomes, their healthcare outcomes, their business results, their student satisfaction and, and engagement, their patient satisfaction and engagement, their customer satisfaction and engagement, their workforce retention, their workforce satisfaction and engagement. 97% of the respondents said that Baldridge improved their job growth and 96% said that it helped improve their community relationships, community support, operational efficiency, cost savings, revenue, and market growth. And the lowest out of all of the responses was 91%, which still is pretty good. 91% said that Baldridge helped improve their customer, patient, or student retention. So certainly that's great data. Um, but it's a relatively small data set. And so we're looking at expanding the distribution of the survey to reach a much broader pool, possibly all award applicants, um, maybe Baldridge Fellows, Baldridge Examiners. And I've spoken to Brian Lassiter about rolling the survey out to Alliance member programs to use with their recipients or other customers, which would obviously really help us uh, enhance the entire data set. So those were the few things that I wanted to share, um, some good information in there, and um, I look forward to some questions after Brian's update, and I'll turn it over to Al and Brian. Thanks, Bob. Brian, show's all yours. All right, thank you, Al, thanks, Bob. Uh, we'll just jump right in. Uh, many on today's call were not available in March, so I wanna give a, a reset the context a little bit and some uh, reminders of who the Alliance is and what we're all about. And uh, hello to all of my Alliance friends out there on the call. So we were founded in 2005, so about 13 year old nonprofit organization with a mission of helping to expand and grow the use of Baldur's throughout the nation and uh, move outcomes in, in all sectors. We're, we're kind of the private sector operations arm of the enterprise, if you will, uh, serving to, to build pipeline and to uh, developmentally work with organizations at all levels of maturity to advance their performance. So next slide, Al, um, to give you a sense of the Alliance's scale, uh, we're currently 29 programs that serve all 50 states and U.S. territories. You can see some of the other statistics there. That it's um, pretty remarkable when you aggregate all of our, our efforts. It's almost 1,500 applications, 160 of them considered full. That's the full 50-page application. Uh, over 1,700 examiners, 41 paid staff, and 500 other volunteers in addition to examiners. Uh, so a lot of horsepower throughout the Alliance uh, to accomplish our, our Baldridge-based work. We host 20 conferences, over 4,000 attendees combined. Um, many of us, a little more than half, are membership-based, and you can see almost 18,000 members. Uh, most of them organizations, some individuals, but most organizations involved in continuous improvement of performance excellence and a combined budget of over $9 million. So a significant scale when you aggregate the, uh, the members of the, of the Alliance. So we can go to the next slide, I'll just give you a sense of some of the progress we've made over the last quarter since um, our last update. Um, just a reminder, and this is not an update necessarily, but for those of you that missed in March, we do have a new website. It's our new front door. Encourage you to check it out as baldryalliance.org. It continues to change and evolve already in the, in the last 90 days. Um, so we'll take your feedback there and encourage you to, to find your Alliance member programs through that, through that portal. We're really excited to uh, collaborate with the foundation and the program to host this year's Baldridge Fall Conference, scheduled for October 24th with pre-conferences October 23rd in Denver. Uh, and this year, the, um, the Alliance, um, is hosting and the, the, the conference is being managed by the Rocky Mountains Performance Excellence and Wisconsin Center for Performance Excellence. So those two programs are providing the horsepower to produce what I'm beginning to see as a remarkable program. The agenda is being worked on and finalized and we should have a lot of that ready to, to release to the, to the public here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, to include a tour of Fort Collins uh, the day before as part of the pre-conference proceeding. So literally uh, taking shuttles up to Fort Collins and seeing their operations and spending some time with another Baldridge winter elevations. So a unique, um, a, a unique pre-conference experience that might even 
include some of the uh, world-class beer that comes out of that community as well. Um, we are continuing to expand the sales of a new tool, um, new to the Alliance that is, called Baldrige Express. Um, I know many of you on this update have some familiarity with it. Some of your organizations may have even used it. This is about a 20, 22 year old pro product that the Alliance uh, inherited the rights to a couple of years ago. And it's, a, it's an online Baldrige based self-assessment, about 40 to 45 behaviorally anchored questions. Um, it's a quick and easy diagnostic tool to help organizations identify their strengths and OFIs. If they're a little, um, if they're a little leery of jumping right into a full-blown award application. Um, so I think it's a great place to start a journey to excellence or a great place to take a quick dipstick if you're already on that journey as a way to get a sense from your people, your employees, uh, where your strengths and OFIs might lie. So if you're interested in that tool, um, contact any member of your alliance network and we'll we'll begin to explore the, the benefits for, for your organization. We're working on several partnerships um, with with some of the organizations uh, that Al and Bob mentioned earlier and don't have a lot to report today but um, we have an emerging partnership with Walden University to try to bring these concepts into the nonprofit sector deeper into the nonprofit sector. Uh, the Alliance is finding new ways to partner with communities of excellence and hopefully we'll have more to report there in the coming in the coming months. And we continue to work with ACBSB, which is the one of the two accrediting bodies for business schools, uh, to help use Baldur's to advance their performance excellence efforts too. And probably other partnerships that are emerging, but I wanted to call those three out as we continue to, to build relationships with other organizations that are trying to advance, advance performance. Um, probably goes without saying, we're, we're a, a key part of the enterprise and, and um, both Al and Bob hinted to the work that the enterprise is doing to try to change our own model and, and advance um, you know, more efficiency and, and growth throughout the enterprise. I think probably by the next webinar, all three of us will have more to, to share there. But as a group, we're identifying a couple of key focus areas and a couple of task forces that the enterprise will launch here later this summer or fall. Um, so I'm excited about the Alliance's role in that. I'm excited about the enterprise's efforts really try to drive growth and uh, advancement in, in the enterprise. And uh, lastly, the Alliance itself continues to explore ways to improve our own, our own efficiency, our own consistency and impact. We've got standards developed for several components of the Alliance. Our top um, tier awards have a standard, our judging processes have a standard. Um, we're working on potentially lower level standards for lower tiered awards and some other Standards and the Alliance is just about ready to identify and select our own um, focus areas, our own task forces that'll drive um, improvement within within our Alliance system. So more to come there as well. So I think with that, I'm showing about the time's up. I thank you all for about 15 minutes of some questions. That's some of the key efforts that the Alliance has going on. I'd like well. to thank everybody for being on today. We are going to take a few questions here, um, and the first one's going to go to Bob. Uh, Bob, what, what is the initial feedback that you're getting on the pilot program um, from uh, cons this consultant community and from examiners? So we've, I have floated the idea of the um, pilot approach throughout uh, really the past several months. And I've shared it with all the Bulge examiners, including the Bulge consultant community. And um, the feedback has been uh, cautiously optimistic to this point. Uh, now that we actually have um, a, a group of examiners that are using the process, testing the process, uh, initially on the case study and ultimately on an actual applicant, um, we're getting more sort of um, boots on the ground type of feedback and it's more valuable for us and it's more telling as to whether or not the process is, is going to work. And that's, as I shared before, we've already gotten good feedback from them, uh, from the examiners. Uh, they're identifying some opportunities to tweak it and make it a little bit better. But overall, their feedback is positive. They're finding that the, the modified approach is definitely easier. Um, it requires less, less effort. 
And as far as they can tell so far, it is still adding uh, a lot of rigor to the to the process. So, um, as I said, we were we're going to be moving through a, an actual review with the uh, with an applicant, and that's when we'll really um, get a sense for how well it works as we get through the entire process really see the product that is produced and the experience of the applicant as we go through the new component of a virtual site visit prior to an on-site site visit. Very good, thanks, Bob. Uh, Brian, I think the next question here is probably most appropriate for you. Is there going to be a Communities of Excellence uh, briefing and um, workshop at the fall conference like there was last year? There is. I know Stephanie Norling's planning that. It's actually going to be the day after the conference, so the 20, uh, that'd be 5th, I believe. I don't have the calendar open. That Thursday, right after the conference. So more details will come out here probably later this summer. Okay. And that is, um, are there any more questions out there? As a reminder to people, if you'd like to ask a question, you could type it into your chat box and. Uh, and we'll ask one of the panelists here, give it another minute here. Uh, with that, again, I'd just like to thank uh, Bob for your update today and Brian for everything that you're doing out there working with the states. Uh, I think we're making a lot of progress on a lot of fronts as well as with Communities of Excellence and Stephanie Norling, everything you're doing out there with that program as well. So thanks for dialing in today, everybody. Uh, there'll be a fourth quarter webinar coming up here shortly and we will have that all to you and not on your calendars in the next few weeks. Uh, thanks again for all your support for not just the foundation, but the entire Baldridge community nationwide and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, everybody. And yeah, likewise. Take care, everybody.